Courtney Gilbert and I'm the Curator of Visual Arts here at the Sun Valley Center for the Arts. The exhibition that we have up right now is called Art into Architecture. Frank Lloyd Wright, Archie Teeter, and Teeter's Knoll, which was curated by Artistic Director Kristen Poole and myself. This exhibition focuses on the only Frank Lloyd Wright designed building in the state of Idaho, the Archie Teeter Studio. It's located near Bliss, Idaho. The exhibition includes photographs of the studio, original architectural drawings and blueprints, furniture, and then a selection of paintings that were made by Archie Teeter, the artist who commissioned the studio. Archie Teeter and Frank Lloyd Wright were both driven in their work by a deep love of landscape. In Frank Lloyd Wright's case, that meant making buildings that worked harmoniously with the landscapes into which they were set. For Teeter, making landscape paintings was a central part of his career, and particularly the landscapes of the American West. We're presenting the work of these two men together in this exhibition with the Archie Teeter Studio, otherwise known as Teeter's Knoll, as the outcome of that dialogue. One of the most remarkable things about the Frank Lloyd Wright building is the time in which it was built. It was actually commissioned in 1952, right at the height of Frank Lloyd Wright's career. So it's quite remarkable that Archie Teeter and his wife were able to write this letter and convince Wright that he should design a studio in the middle of nowhere while he was simultaneously working on the Guggenheim in New York City. Wright is certainly the best known architect in the 20th century in the United States. During his lifetime as an architect, designed about a thousand buildings, but this is the only artist's studio that was ever fully realized under his design. You'll see, as you walk through the exhibition, a number of pieces of furniture. Wright makes these beautiful, beautiful chairs that speak to importance of detail. There are a number of furniture that were designed either by Henry Whiting in the spirit of Frank Lloyd Wright or designed by Wright but never realized. Wright is famous for his prairie school design. He established himself in Chicago, Illinois. He was deeply influenced by the horizontal lines and the expansive spaces of the Midwest, and that combined with the sort of simple aesthetic of the arts and crafts movement really became the foundation for Wright's architecture. You'll see in almost every piece of his architecture the importance of low horizontal lines. At Teeter's Knoll, what you do see is this hugely aspirational prow that Wright designed the building to soar upward. It's correct to think that, that he did that with the intention of wanting to inspire the artists that would work there, that sort of sense of reaching for something greater. You can see the sort of quintessential elements of Wright's holistic approach to create a sense of harmony, both harmony in the house and harmony for the users, but also harmony for the exterior and that it feels integrated into the landscape. Archie Teeter was born in Boise, Idaho in 1901. From a very young age, Teeter was extremely interested in becoming an artist. And his early work is reflective of the fact that he was largely self-taught. He used these opportunities working in logging camps and hunting in the Hagerman Valley, all as the basis for making paintings. We selected paintings that reflect his deep connection to the state of Idaho, landscape paintings that he made in the Hagerman Valley, paintings from Ketchum and Sun Valley, the dance scene at Slavey's, figures whirling through the bar room as they listen to music. By the late 1920s, he began visiting Jackson Hole, which would become his summer home for almost the rest of his life. He made many works that were really grounded in fantasy. This exhibition includes a painting called Night of the Gypsies, where he shows a group of gypsies dancing and playing music by the light of a fire. Another painting, Devils and Angels, figures representing good and evil as they face each other over a chasm cut into the earth. All of his work, I think, is united by this idea of dynamism and movement. At times his paintings verged on surrealism in their use of fantasy. At other times he was much more realistic and straightforward. Peter actually consulted a well-known historian, Mari Sandos, to get as much historical accuracy as he could. And the result is this incredibly dynamic painting that captures the battle on the greasy grass 
both the, the chaos and also the violence. For Teeter, painting was a form of processing his experience of a place. He was extremely interested in architecture, and as part of this exhibition, we have two paintings that he made of the Archie Teeter studio, as well as two really wonderful paintings he made of other Frank Lloyd Wright buildings, the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York, and then this really wonderful small painting of Frank Lloyd Wright's winter headquarters, Taliesin West. Always a thrill for the center to be able to present work that is of Idaho and both Archie Teeter and Frank Lloyd Wright and Henry Whiting who is the owner of the Frank Lloyd Wright house are all people of this place. This house from its conception to this day has been a place of creativity. It was obviously commissioned to be a creative space for Archie Teeter. When Henry bought the house, he's doing it with an eye to continue to use it as a creative space, and he's employed local craftspeople who are deeply committed to thinking about architecture and design and material. So it's been this place of creativity throughout its lifetime. So I encourage everybody to come in and have a look and stick your nose in here and maybe get down on the floor and see what you can do with the blocks and have your hand at, at uh, fashioning your own Frank Lloyd Wright building. Thank you so much.